What's going on y'all? The old Bayou Bandits back again with another video. Today, we're gonna do a video on my boat, the Bayou Bandit. I've had so many people ask me so many questions uh, about a ton of stuff on this boat. So today, we are gonna go over it one end to the other, tell y'all everything about it. Uh, before we get started, this video is brought to you by Bay and Backwater Marine, your one-stop shop for everything dealing with your boat. You need to go see Preston Freeman. I'll leave the link in the description below. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. He does excellent work. Uh, motor service, you need your motor winterized. You need the water pump changed out, spark plug, service, oil change. You need your boat trailer rewired. You've got new electronics. You want your whole boat rewired. You want your sound system installed. You want your trolling motor installed. Whatever you need dealing with boats, Preston is the guy. And also, Bay and Backwater Marine will come to you. If you've got your boat on a lift, on Dog River, Fish River, Dolphin Island, wherever, give Preston a call. He will come to your location do all the work on your motor on your boat whatever you've got you don't have to worry about putting it on the trailer trailering it to his shop give him a call numbers right there and he will get you fixed up back on the water fast this boat was custom built by charles leonard in louisiana uh, he used to build all the boats for troy landry with swamp people he was the only person i could find that would build my boat. Most boat builders have their boat design and that's all they wanna build. Charles built this to my exact specs. I was down there three weeks, start to finish, and he had my boat built. Uh, like I said, it's one of a kind and I love it. I love the design. There's absolutely nothing I would change about it. Uh, I have thought about putting a tunnel hole in this boat but I'm unsure if I'm gonna do that or not. Uh, it just performs so good the way it is. My dad got a boat uh, built about two years prior to this. I liked his design. I modified it a little bit for my applications. So she's one of a kind. There's not another one like her in the world. Uh, she is 24 foot long, completely flat bottom. She is eight foot four inches across the gunnels 32 inch sides i raised the floor up 14 inches and she is completely self bailing i've got two inch and a half pipes one on each side so if i'm sitting if i've got my boat tied up for the weekend at a dock it comes a four or five inch rain no problem all that water run right out if by some chance i catch a wave over the over the side she's gonna run right out the back no problems i got her built three sixteenths bottom and sides she's heavy built she's like me she's heavy she's wide but she'll get the job done every time and due to the design of this boat with it being so wide so completely flat bottom she floats super super skinny we can be loaded down with me and four others on the front of this boat and we're getting in six six and a half inches of water to get those big flounder she floats super super skinny everybody that comes aboard when they're out there they cannot believe how shallow this boat floats and she runs super super shallow i can go through those skinny mud flats crab traps will be out of the water we're running by them we're getting to our next spot Moving up here, we're gonna talk about our flounder gigging lights first. I get a ton of questions on them. Uh, five star LEDs from Victor McNew. Link will be in the description below. Uh, he makes AC lights, DC lights. Uh, I run the 12 volt DC lights. I love them. They're the best I have ever had. I've been flounder gigging for over 40 years and there's nothing in the world that competes with these 2200 kelvin lights uh stained water they will cut through it they will penetrate to the bottom uh clean water man they're awesome 
I'm running 700 watts of lights. These are the 100 watts. He also does laser etching. Uh, if you want anything laser etched, send it to him. He will get it etched and back to you quick. I got him to put my logo on my two 100 watt lights. Uh, I'm running two 100s and I am running 10 50 watts. Those are the 50s. I've got four on each side on the bow and I've got one on each side on my tower in the back. And believe it or not, when you've got decent water clarity, there is no gap between the light on the back and the ones on the front. You can see all the way down this boat. If you look at some of my gigging videos, you will see that. It's incredible the coverage these lights have got. I am powering them with ionic lithium batteries. I run three 100 amp hour ionic lithium batteries for my lights. I do run a generator. And this generator powers my onboard battery charger to keep my batteries up. I can run a full five hour trip on battery power alone, but I like the redundancy. I like the backup system. If you're just running 110 lights, your generator fails, you're done. With this, I run my generator, and by some chance, if it was to fail, I could continue right on throughout the trip running off my Ionic lithium batteries. The Ionic lithium batteries have an 11 year warranty. Uh, see Danny Rogers with Performance Fishing Electronics. His link will also be in the description below. I love them, they're maintenance free. They weigh 30 pounds a piece, and they replace two 29 series deep cycle marine batteries. I will never run another battery other than the ionic batteries from Danny Rogers with Performance Fishing Electronics. I have just recently put this Suzuki 200 four stroke on the back of this boat. And I tell you, I've got uh, right at 50 hours on it now. And I am just blown away with the efficiency and the torque of this motor it uh it it blows me away the performance i get and the fuel efficiency i get i'm running a four blade 20 pitch prop uh i am going to change that i don't have it quite propped right yet i need a 21 pitch i'm gonna probably go to a power tech 21 pitch four blade to get me where i need to be uh, I'm running about 43, 44 miles an hour before I hit the rev limiter. So she's still a little under propped. This is a stiffy shawl wing. Uh, if you've seen, if you're a follower of my channel when I had the old Honda 150, I built one out of aluminum and it did awesome, awesome. So when I went with the new motor, I wanted to go with one of these shawl wings. Uh, it doesn't mount to your motor. There's no holes drilled in your factory cavitation plate. Uh, it's a compression style. You got this top plate and bottom plate and your bolts are on the outside of your motor. So no holes were drilled in my motor whatsoever. This is a quarter inch fiberglass and the nose tilts up on it. And I have never had a wing that performed as good as this. I can make this boat do whatever I want it to do, no matter where my load is at. I can have four big people on the back of this boat and it doesn't, it doesn't porpoise, it handles like a dream. I'm running a six inch Atlas hydraulic jack plate. And as you can see, the bottom of that boat, the only thing under the bottom of that boat is the skag and a little bit of the bottom of the prop. I'm running higher than half the gear casing. So I have very little draft. I can run this boat in some super, super skinny water. I've also added a five degree negative transom wedge. So when I trim that motor all the way under, I've got a very steep angle. So when I'm in them shallow flats and I shower down on that motor, she's gonna get up. That wing forces that back end up and she gets up level. That bow doesn't come up like that and bog. She gets up flat 
and she is gone love it love that setup and as you can see as high as i'm running from the bottom of that boat this wing catches all that spray all that water forces it down on my prop and water pump and she does not cavitate at all all right i've got a nice seat right here nice cushion seat for people to sit on uh my tower on the back i've got a spare trolling motor you know i get people coming from louisiana tennessee minnesota all over the u.s to come flounder gigging with me and you know a trolling motor can put you down i'm rough on a trolling motor in the shallow flats that i'm in so i have a spare i'm a machinist by trade i built these aluminum brackets compression brackets i can unbolt it i can swap it out with the one in the front in about five minutes we're up and going ready to go i love that redundant system same with my generator and batteries is the same with a trolling motor i don't want anything to put me down to end a trip so we got it right there ready to go when we need it get a lot of questions about my gigs uh jim Carlson makes the best gigs money can buy uh, these are stainless steel gigs these are the commercial grade they are titanium tipped look at the barbs on those things super super sharp titanium tipped i get people gigging rocks gigging everything in the world you can imagine on these gigging charters and they are just still super super sharp after years of use uh he has paired up with Boutwell cane poles out of Andalusia, and they make these bamboo poles that has a taper to fit these gigs. And to, in my opinion, you cannot beat this setup. Uh, the metal handle gigs get cold in the winter, hot in the summer. Uh, these do not. They're bamboo. Uh, air is trapped in the sails. Uh, if you were to throw the gig over to overboard the the handle end of that gig would float up and you'd be able to retrieve your gig i love them they work really really good i've got a 27 gallon gas tank that is all i need normally on a trip i don't burn but more than about four or five gallons on a trip uh simrad and ray marine electronics i've got the google chart the google maps overlay on my simrad unit i can see all the shallow flats sandbars boat docks whatever with that unit and i keep that one on the bottom imaging uh toggle switch for my hydraulic jack plate this is my fish cleaning table uh, i've got a light right here i do everything cleaning fish like you know one or two o'clock in the morning y'all and it's dark so i've got plenty of lights on this boat this pulls right out St I stow it in my front bow hatch the whole fish cleaning table pulls right out it just slip sleeves in two receivers in the gunnel cap i can pull it right out these legs unscrew this is made out of aluminum conduit i use the conduit uh, coupling right there i can screw these legs in or out break it down stow the whole thing in that front bow hatch as well i've got my holes drilled in it where when i'm cleaning fish all the guts all the bad water goes through the holes outside the boat nothing comes inside the boat works out perfect i've got my wash down pump right here i've got it through a bulkhead fitting in that back pod routed up under the gunnel works perfect got it on a toggle switch over here my hatches uh, these are pods it helps displace the motor weight to keep the back end still light uh, that storage i've got some uh, my ropes my anchor stuff like that in this side this side over here under the generator is my fish live well in the winter time when i'm trout fishing and i want to upsize my trout i keep them in that live well and that also is the pickup for my wash down pump i'm running the pro mariner battery chargers uh, they will work with the ionic lithium batteries uh, eventually i will upgrade to the ionic lithium battery chargers i'm also running 300 amp hour lithium 
ionic lithium batteries for my 36 volt 112 Minn Kota trolling motor. This bow deck is nine foot six by the width of the boat. We got plenty, plenty of room for five of us, me and four of my charter clients to get on the bow of this boat. Plenty of room to stand up here and gig with all the lights on. These steps hinge up. I've got rod storage tubes on this side. I keep my bows stored under the deck on this side. Now I've got hinges, it hinges up. I can access all that space in there for storage. All of my rails and the tower on the back was built out of one inch aluminum conduit. You can bend it, it works real well. You can fill it full of sand, heat it up, make your bends, do whatever you would like with it. Uh, this is removable, comes right out of the way. Slide it back in. When I'm when I'm running charters, this is where I'm at. I'm up here on this cooler, standing here all night long. I can see everything all the way around. I can spot the flounder out before my clients see them. Let them know if they're big enough to gig or not. Watch them, coach them down, make sure they get a good gig on the fish. Uh, my trolling motor, I built this extension handle where I don't have to bend over to reach the knob. I can just turn it from the top handle. I've got quick connect plugs. Like I said, I can quick change these out in a matter of minutes. Uh, this is a custom built bracket. Uh, this is my lock pin. I can pull that lock pin. This hinges back. I can adjust my height however I want it. I built this locking collar that I can slide, adjust, lock down wherever it needs to be. And when I'm trailering the boat, this is in the up position, locked down with that round mount where it's secure. But to me, that is the, the ultimate trolling motor mount for what I do. Uh, nothing is in the way, right? When it's down, if you go factory and your trolling motor's down, you've got that foot that's mounted to the deck sticking out there in the way, something for somebody to trip on. And I don't like that. So that's my setup. Uh, I'm running a three blade Kippewa prop. Uh, I'm rough on props, y'all. I have never ever had one of these three blade props to break on me. I don't know what type of composite material they use, but those are tough. I tell you what, I beat these props up, rocks, oyster shells, grass. Uh, it's a torquier prop. It, uh, I get more speed, I get more battery life out of these props than the originals. So that's what I run. I absolutely love them. I'm not sponsored by them, but if y'all looking for a good prop, you cannot go wrong with those. I get a lot of questions about my fish box. Uh, everything on this boat is custom built, y'all. Uh, after doing it a long time, I realized some tricks, things that helps me out a lot. I've got the little small door that opens up. You take your flounder, you go in under this plate, have the fish on the bottom side, snatch up, he falls in there. You are good to go. Uh, at the end of the night, when it's time to clean fish, I open the big lid. I've got a 160 quart cooler in there with a permanent drain going right out the side of the boat, hard piped. I can wash everything out, clean everything out, and I am good to go. Uh, bow storage for all my stuff, fish cleaning stuff, all that there. I've got dry storage right here in this box for my clients. I've got my drink cooler for all my clients to put all their drinks in there. Uh, I've got an Ingalls Bait Live well right here. I've got a double bubbler 12 volt pump on a toggle switch. So if I am, you know, fishing with live bait, which I don't do a whole lot, I, I've got that. I can keep all my bait alive. Uh, most of the time I use it for storage. I keep my koozies in there that I give everybody that comes on the trip. I give them a free Bayou Bandit koozie. So I usually keep some of my merch and stuff in there. I've got plenty of lights on this boat. I have blue accent lighting 
to illuminate when people's walking around they can see where they're going i've got white lights around the inside of the gunnels i can flip the toggle switch on it illuminates this whole upper deck here where they can see how to get their flounder off all that good stuff i get a lot of questions about what i used on this boat as far as paint this is a product called tough coat uh very very impressed with it y'all uh started off with a bare aluminum boat when i got it built and uh you've got a primer that goes on it's born red put the primer on and then you've got a roller a textured roller and you roll this tough coat on it it has rubber tire granulates in it instead of sand so it's it's never ever slick it is it's plenty of traction it's never slick uh it's not rough on your bare feet if you're walking around barefoot it's not hot and it's not rough on your feet it's just the right amount of traction and it holds up unbelievably well y'all uh, if y'all been on the charter with me y'all know i stand right here i have my gig stabbed down right here all night long night after night tough coat has not failed me at all i do have a lot of scratches on the the blue paint from my gigs but unbelievable how it holds up never ever gets slick i went with a white i came back with a brush and i splatter painted everything the same blue as my old f-150 and the sides of the boat i've got a cajun anchor with a t-handle on it it's nothing but a stainless steel heavy wall pipe and uh i've got two receivers for it one on either side one here one on the other side uh, if I'm fishing or if we've got like 10 minutes before it gets dark enough to flounder, I'll take that Cajun anchor. I'll stab us down in the water and we're there until it is time to turn the lights on and gig some flounder. All right, y'all. I know that was a lengthy video, but I've had so, so many questions about so much on this boat. What I do, what my setup is, you know, so... Maybe that'll answer a lot of questions. If you've got more questions, please leave a comment. I will answer them, get back with you on it. Thank y'all. If y'all like the video, give it a like. If you hadn't subscribed already, give my channel a subscribe. I've got over 100 videos out on my YouTube channel, fishing the Alabama and Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'd appreciate it. It'd help my channel grow. Thank y'all. See y'all next Sunday.